I'm Jeff Parker, uh, one of the professors in the Centre for Medical Image Computing, CMIC. Um, my background is obviously in medical imaging, particularly in MRI, um, and you know, my research interest is around using computational methods with MRI to extract useful information from, from images. Uh, as part of my role at UCL, I manage the Medical Imaging Research Software Group, um, which is a small team currently of two people who provide um, uh, software support for medical imaging. And the reason for setting it up in the first place were, were twofold. Um, one was around the fact that you know it's very common in research for PhD students and postdocs to write a load of code associated with their research and medical imaging is no different to many other fields in that respect. Um, but then those people move on, you know, they move on to another position or onto another project and the code often gets left behind without any support um, and without um, knowledge of really what the code does and how it was, you know, how it was put together. And so this, this, this is a problem that plagues um, uh, scientific software development um, and as I say, medical imaging is no exception to that. So we wanted to set up a team that could provide more professional software support for medical imaging research. And that could mean, for example, refactoring code that was written in, um, in MATLAB, for example, by a postdoc who, who then moved on into something more robust and more supportable. Or it could mean getting involved in setting up uh, in the development of new code for specific projects um, as they come along. The second reason was um, uh, really spurred on by concerns around information governance when it comes to storing and curating medical imaging data for research. So over the years, um, many groups worldwide have, have created large databases of medical images that they use for medical research and for methodological research associated with medical imaging. But the classic model is that a, you know, a postdoc will have a load of images on a, on a USB drive. Um, no one really knows what images that postdoc's got. Um, and when the project's over, no one really knows what happens to those images once the, uh, the postdoc moves on potentially takes their USB drive with them. So that's a clear governance issue. Um, and so in the age of GDPR, you know, we really thought we needed to do something about this. And so we're, we're really pushing forward with um, the deployment of more centralized um, research imaging databases that enable researchers to, first of all, store their data in a, in a, in a common location that um, has the right levels of security for doing this sort of thing and anonymization. Um, and secondly, um, allows them to interact with those images in, a, in, a, um, in an efficient way and to build pipelines around the data storage. When we were thinking about setting up um, MIRSG, um, we thought of a few different models um, for how we could do it. And so I'm based in the Centre for Medical Image Computing. And one of the things we thought was, why don't we just directly employ a couple of software developers um, within the Centre for Medical Image Computing because, you know, we know about imaging, we know about computing, that would be the logical place to, to put this team, wouldn't it? Um, but, you know, of course, the situation in reality is that CMIC is a, is a centre that is full of academics and, you know, they're, they're researchers, they're not professional software developers. And that means if we've gone down that route, um, the, the necessary peer group and professional structures wouldn't be there for the team that we were setting up. And so this led to discussions with RSDG about whether we could come up with some sort of hybrid model, which meant that we could have um, the right level of input into the work that the, the team gets involved with, you know, the particular projects that are being supported and guide that side of things, whilst also providing the professional home for the team in terms of the peer group, the you know, opportunities for training, career development and, and, and professional line management that's really needed for a team of specialist software developers. We've now been running this for about a year and a half. And you know, when you set up um, a new team like this, you never really know how much demand there is going to be um, for the activities that are proposed. But um, happily, we've seen a lot of demand and um, you know, it's not just within the Centre for Medical Image Computing, but across UCL and the partner hospitals, um, we've seen quite a diverse set of end users coming to us for support um, in this uh, medical imaging 
area. So we're certainly meeting a, a need that we um, had imagined was there, um, and obviously it turns out there really is there. Um, and so it's going very well. So we've got quite a good diversity of teams that we're supporting. Um, so everything from, if you like, core imaging scientists all the way through to people with much more of an applications focus. And we, you know, we're working with people um, embedded in uh, University College Hospital, also Great Ormond Street, um, and also recently um, begun to interact with people at Barts. So quite a broad set of um, uh, uh, collaborators in the in the clinical domain as well as um, in the sort of engineering physics and uh, medical imaging um, areas so it's going extremely well um, and a, an indicator of that um, that positive trajectory is that we're hoping to expand the team imminently so currently we're a team of um, two uh, specialist software developers so um, uh, we hope that in the second half of this year hopefully imminently we're going to expand that team to three uh, which will give us extra bandwidth to uh, manage additional projects.